Okay, so this is an inorganic question. So, right, so we will discuss this quickly. So there is a white powder here, right? So this is a white powder. And uh, when you heat this white powder and use a white solid which turns yellow on heating and a colorless gas that turns uh, lime water milky. So this is generally, you know, this should be uh, carbon dioxide, right? So if this is a carbon dioxide, you, it should give you an idea when you heat a carbon dioxide evolvement mean you should be either a carbonate right so this should be more or less a carbonate so i will write down the, there should be a carbonate here in a because when you heat it will give uh, carbon dioxide so what can be this uh, white solid that turns yellow on heating so this is a 3D block period element. So if you think about the elements that you have on uh, D block, there is one uh, oxide which gives yellow on heating and when it cools down, the color is white. Can you remember this? Uh, you can use the chat box. What is it? Okay, so I have one answer. What do you th what, what what do you think about others? Because this question is very easy because this is this was very straightforward, right? Because you should know what they are actually asking about uh, when you see this um, yellow on heating, okay? So I am not going to uh, tell you again and again. Uh, if you, uh, wait, I will see. Yeah. So if you go through my uh, D block chemistry tutorial, okay? So this is what they have given here, zinc oxide. When it is hot, it turns yellow, but when you cool down, like at the room temperature or cool, it becomes white, right? So in this one, no other compound that turns yellow on uh, heating and turns cold. So the only possible compound uh, for this particular question is zinc oxide, okay? And it is can be either obtained from zinc hydroxide or either from zinc carbonate. Okay. Here it is hydroxide. When you heat it, it will give zinc oxide. But if this is a zinc carbonate, it will give zinc oxide plus carbon dioxide, which is the case. Okay. So if you remember about that, automatically, this answer is uh, straightforward. So this should be typically zinc oxide. So if this is zinc oxide plus uh, carbon dioxide, this should be zinc carbonate. Okay. So you have zinc carbonate white powder. And when you add diluted HCl, it is forming a solution. So you know there is in carbonate, there is carbonate ion. Remember? So if you have carbonate ion, CO3 2 minus and zinc 2 plus, you know, when you add a diluted HCl, we discussed about this in an ion analysis. When you have carbonate, when you add a diluted acid, it will form a gas. So again, this was the same gas here. So this should be again carbon dioxide, carbonate plus H plus giving the CO2. And zinc 2 plus will have its solution in water. This is diluted, so you can write down the solution uh, in water. So zinc uh, H2O6 H2O6. So this should be 2 plus because uh, the cation here is 2 plus. 
then uh, what they are doing here is uh, they are adding a little bit of uh, ammonium hydroxide and ammonium chloride. So if you can remember in the last week in question number five, we discussed the addition of ammonium chloride to decrease the concentration of OH minus in the solution. So which means here, the result of this is low OH minus concentration in the solution, okay? So the result of this is low OH minus. Okay, the concentration of the solution is low OH, which gives the idea when you add H2S here, zinc sulfide can be precipitated or not. That is the idea, okay? Since this, Ammonium hydroxide is added with ammonium chloride. There will be a low OH minus concentration where the ionic product of zinc two plus times OH minus will pass KSP so that the white precipitate is formed. So the white precipitate should be zinc sulfide. So this is which group? Group number four in our cation analysis. Because if you remember, I will show you that. Uh, wait, I have to find the uh, note. TRD inorganic uh, cation analysis. Yes, so I will share the screen again now. Right, so this is our group. Uh, three, where we add ammonium hydroxide, ammonium chloride to make the concentration lower. And here we have the group four. So you see here, zinc sulfide is uh, precipitated. So the filtrate is basic with low OH minus concentration. Why? The filtrate comes from here after precipitating out these three, right? So when you uh, add, ammonium hydroxide, ammonium chloride. As I have explained here, when ammonium plus concentration increases, this equilibrium shift towards this direction, which makes this OH minus concentration lower. So the precipitate with low OH minus uh, will be uh, precipitated out. So it is ferric, chromic and aluminum hydroxide, which is a gelatinous precipitate as well. So when you go down, the filtrate, now the filtrate is basic. This is the importance here for group four, right? So when the filtrate is basic, what is going to happen here? We will see here. So you make the filtrate basic, then you add H2S. So when you add H2S, remember H2S is in an equilibrium like this because H2S is a weak acid and it is a weak acidic gas. So first it will give one proton and in the second equilibrium, it will give two protons, right? So here in this case, since the medium is basic, these OH minus ions will react with this H plus, making this two equilibrium shift towards the right hand side, which means now there will be higher concentration of S2 minus. So, the precipitates that form here will have higher S2 minus concentration for its ionic product, which means the KSP of these sulfides should be high because here the sulfide concentration is very large. So when you multiply the zinc two plus concentration with sulfide concentration, since the sulfide concentration is very large, the basic medium is basic, there will be higher KSP value. Because if you think about the ionic product, now here, according to this situation, the ionic product is very large, okay? So even when the ionic product is very large, here the sulfides that formed here also, the table value, the KSP value is very large. That is why you need a higher S2 minus concentration to precipitate out these precipitates, right? The table value of these sulfides are very large. So if you want to precipitate these three, or in fact, these four, 
you need to have a higher S2 minus concentration. So that is the importance of having this medium like basic in nature, okay? So this is the sulfide that is formed here. So I will stop and again share. So this is zinc sulfide and here solution is zinc H2O6 here. There should be a six here, sorry. And uh, when you add a little bit of uh, NaOH, it will form the gelatinous precipitate again. This is a uh, zinc uh, hydroxide, which is going to form here. So it is uh, very nice because they have asked about zinc at last. Because when you think about the question of D block, they normally never ask about zinc because it does not form much compounds, only these. And if you add excess uh, NaOH, remember, or either excess uh, ammonium hydroxide, it will form its complexation. For an example, if you add excess uh, further NaOH, it will form the zinc uh, OH. Uh, Four. Now it will have four OH minus group that is complexes. The charge is two minus here. It should be two minus. And here, when you add excess ammonia, again it will form zinc amine complex. Uh, this will be having four groups. And this is two plus. And remember, these two are colorless. That is one of the important. So this is straightforward. I'll again share another one here. Um, so D block, so you can understand. If you have zinc hydroxide, you add excess OH minus, it will form zinc OH42 uh, minus, which is colorless. And again, if you add a little bit of uh, NH3 or ammonia, this will form zinc hydroxide. Excess case is forming either amide complex or hydroxide complex, okay? So this is the overall idea. So you should uh, know all these things. Right, so this is straightforward. See, you can, if you, the only point that you should know here is this one and this one. From here, B and C, you can get all other compounds here, right? So identify the species A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. So we have identified them. And we move to question number B and C. So question number B. Test one and two were carried out with an aqueous solution EZ produced by passing the colorless gas P into water. So for an example, if you have a water solution, so we have added this, uh, we bubble this uh, colorless gas, that is P. And when you have this water plus P, this solution is now EZ, right? So we have two tests that has been done. So we add acidified dichromate solution, a clear green solution was obtained. So if you can remember Cr2O72 minus is uh, orange in color. So when you acidify the orange remains it according to our equilibrium dichromate to chromate. And what is happened here from dichromate to Clear green, what is clear green? Chromium, three plus, if you can remember the redox of chromium, right? So which gives me the idea, there is a reduction that is happening here. So if this is happening to be a reduction, there should be something here in this solution. The P should, oxidize in water. We should oxidize because the situation is clear here. Dichromate is reducing to chromium three plus. So P should oxidize to something else. In the second test, they tell, they add H2O2 to solution and warmed, okay. Then added a barium chloride solution. Okay, so they add a barium chloride solution 
So if I can remember about this adding barium chloride, I always see barium chloride added to sulfite or either sulfate, SO3 2 minus or SO4 2 minus. A white precipitate uh, that is insoluble in diluted HCl is formed. So if you can remember, again, I have mentioned this in uh, many cases. Uh, when uh, barium chloride is added to uh, either sulfite, SO3 2 minus, or either SO4 2 minus, okay, we add uh, barium chloride. So this will form barium sulfite and this will form barium sulfate. But barium sulfite is dissolving in HCl, like in acid, even in uh, concentrated acid. But sulfate, remember, barium sulfate, barium sulfate does not dissolve in acids. So barium 2 plus SO4 2 minus. So this is the precipitate that is going to form, which means when it reacted with H2O2, this P, okay, it forms SO4 2 minus typically. Right? That is when it reacts with barium chloride to form barium sulfate precipitate. So what should be here in P? It has to form sulfate. So normally this oxidizes to sulfate. So what should be the compound that oxidizes to sulfate when you have here a colorless P gas? That is the idea. So if this want to get oxidized to sulfate to minus, here it should be SO2, yes, that should be present in water solution because here you can see it can oxidize from plus 4 to plus 6, okay, so this is the idea, plus 4 to plus 6 and one might think why it cannot be H2S? Because H2S sulfide is uh, minus two. So it also can oxidize from minus two to sulfate. It is a possible thing, right? So someone can think whether H2S can be taken as an answer or not, but H2S cannot be taken as an answer here in this situation because if you want to go from minus 2 to plus 6, you need to have a very strong oxidizing agent. Okay. So in this situation, it is okay because K2Cr207 is okay. It can be used for H2S. But here, H2O2 to get oxidized H2S to sulfate, H2O2 is not enough. The oxidizing power is not enough to go from there to there. That is why the perfect answer for here is SO2, right? Otherwise, don't forget from H2S, even you can go to SO4 2 minus. Even you can go from sulfur, but here it is a gas. So since it, can, it should be SO2 or H2S, so, or either you can even, since this is the solution, so you can even write SO2 in water, like SO3 to minus is already formed, right? In the plus, plus four condition. You can either, uh, you, the gas should be surely SO2 here, identify the gas. So the gas should be SO2 gas. So now you know the reason why it cannot be H2S because here the oxidizing power is generally not enough, okay? Here, that is enough for SO4 just to go from plus four to plus six. The oxidation change is just two. But here, if you want to go from minus two to plus six, the oxidation change is eight. First, you have to go from minus two to zero, then zero to plus six. So it is not easy to do like that, okay? Then give the balanced chemical equation for the reactions that occur in test one and two. So, okay, so I will, uh, 
stop sharing this. So we will uh, use the board for this for a while. Okay, so we have SO4, right? So SO2, SO4 to minus. So we have sulfur, sulfur, two oxygen here, four oxygen here. So I will go put uh, two H2O here. And to balance the hydrogen, I will put four H plus here. And now I need to balance the charge here. There is uh, four plus, two minus. So I will add two electrons. So this is the oxidation that removes electrons. And in the solution also we have dichromate to chromium three plus, which is our reduction in this case. Okay, so this is our reduction. So I have two chromium here, one chromium. So I have to balance the mass first, two chromium done. Then oxygen, seven H2O, and hydrogen, 14H plus, right? Now, charge. So here plus six, here plus 12. Yes, so plus 12, so I can uh, add like six electrons. So this will be eight, 14 minus eight is plus six and plus six, okay? Then you can multiply this by three, to make the six electron and these two you can add accordingly. Okay, so that is the balance equation for test uh, one. And the second one, uh, for the second one, again, you can uh, use the same uh, SO2 to SO4 to minus because of the uh, oxidation. Uh, the reduction is H2O2 uh, reduced to what? You can use the chat box to tell me. H2O2 is reduced to what? So what is the answer for this H2O2? It is reduced, right? Remember H2O2 oxygen is in minus one. So it can be either oxidized or reduced to minus two because oxygen has zero and minus two as well, right? So typically if this is oxidizing to zero, it should evolve O2. And if this is reducing from minus one to minus two, it should give water. So here the oxidation reaction is this. So water reaction H2O2 should form water, the reduction. Okay, so you are correct. I have one answer from Maya. So it should be water that is forming here. So two hydrogen is okay. Okay, so that is done. So, Hydrogen is done, but the problem here is with oxygen. So oxygen, I have two here. So if I add two here, there will be two, two oxygen, but hydrogen is again reducing. So I can add two H plus here and two electrons. Okay. So this is our reduction. This is our oxidation for the second test. Okay. Please try to remember this. These are very common reaction that we see in our inorganic chemistry. So when you learn inorganic chemistry, if you see these reactions, you should be smiling, not worrying. You should be smiling because you see all these reactions many times when you do the calculations. So if you are worrying why I see this reaction, which means it should give you the idea you have not done enough calculation. I'm not telling you have not done enough uh, studying about this species. I am telling you have not done enough calculation regarding redox because these are redox reaction that we commonly see when we, when we study about the redox equations in chapter two or the chapter three, if I can remember. So this is very necessary, right? So 
even though if you are not studying these things, you can go through the past papers that we have discussed, how many equations up to now we have discussed. We have discussed a lot of equations, so you can go through these equations. Okay, so these are, you need to balance this equation and uh, you need to add them. When Q gas was passed through the solution, is that a pale yellow? So pale yellow could be seen as a white or that if it is pale yellow or white, this should be surely sulfur. And uh, is that is SO2. So if you want to precipitate sulfur from SO2, typically we send H2S gas. This is also a common example, right? So H2S plus SO2, it will form sulfur plus water. This is another common uh, reaction that we always study. If you don't remember, please go through uh, the tutorial. You can see I have explained this one as well. Right, so Part C is again a very nice question that I need to elaborate more to give a clear picture, right? So first of all, I will uh, draw these situations on the board and then we will discuss very quickly. And meanwhile, if you have uh, any questions, you can uh, yes, use the chat box to uh, ask, right? Right, so a sample given for analysis was found containing sodium hydroxide, sodium carbonate and inert material. So we have a sample that contains sodium hydroxide and sodium carbonate plus let's say something like a sand, an inert material which does not react, right? Uh, and it is uh, water soluble as well. The following procedure was determined, uh, used to determine the percentage of, ah, right. So the idea is we need to find the percentage of sodium carbonate, which means weight to weight percentage, right? And we have given several procedures as well. So a weight of 42.40 grams of the sample was transferred quantitatively to 500 of a volumetric sample. So, yeah, we, we took like uh, 42.40 grams and it was in a solution of 500 cubic centimeter. And uh, water is added and this is solution X. This is solution X, right? So in the first step, Right, from this, we can take uh, 25 cubic centimeter and we titrate with uh, HCl and using methyl orange. So HCl is used under methyl orange and uh, the volume was 32 cubic centimeter. This is the first one. And the second situation. Right, for the second situation, what they have done here, again, uh, 25 cubic centimeter, same volume of solution X, uh, 25. First, they have added barium chloride, which gives the idea that all carbonates are precipitated as barium carbonate solid. So which means in the solution, you have only now NaOH uh, that is going to react with HCl. And uh, the endpoint was found to be 24 cubic centimeter. Okay. So this is the endpoint, 24 cubic centimeter, right? And situation three, uh, 25 again, okay, so situation three gives a different story where they have now taken this diluted HCl that was used to titrate here and here. 
so which gives me the clear information that here they have not given the concentration of hcl so surely the third step should be some way to find the concentration of hcl because if you know the concentration of hcl at these two cases you can automatically find the amount of uh, sodium carbonate in the solution so step 3 is they have taken hcl solution uh, 25 cubic centimeter and uh, they have added uh, kio3 and ki uh, in excess and uh, then they add uh, ki and kio3 so which should evolve i2 that is should be going through uh, iodometric reaction to form nai and na2s4o6 typically so and the sodium thiosulfate amount that was necessary is 0.5 m and burette reading is 12.5 so this is a big story right but if you think about the situation uh the understanding of this question it is not much big right because you will see when i explain it okay so the situation is clear right so at the first case we have taken 25 cubic centimeter of this solution and diluted with methyl orange in the second solution we had 25 cubic centimeter of this solution we precipitate out all barium carbonate and then we have in the solution only a NaOH and we again try to but the, if you want to find barium and uh, sodium carbonate percentage here these two reactions are enough okay but the problem here is they have not given the concentration of hcl that they use to find the concentration of hcl they have given this situation Okay, that is another piece of information that you need uh, to determine the percentage of sodium carbonate. So clearly, you can see in the first question they ask to find the concentration of H plus, right? So how do you find the concentration of H plus? So if you can remember, uh, in this uh, equation where iodine is titrated with uh, sodium thiosulfate, the typical iodometric uh, reaction. Uh, the amount of sodium thiosulfate that is uh, consumed is given, right? And I2 form based on the reaction that is happening with H plus, HCl with I minus and IO3 minus. So if you remember about the reaction with I minus with IO3 minus, we discussed this reaction also many times. So if you can remember, this is a disproportionation reaction. So typically, if you have I minus in the solution, it will go to I2. This is one of the reactions. The other one is IO3 minus also goes to I2. Okay. So here, this is the oxidation. And here, this is the reduction. Because this is from minus 1 to 0 oxidation. This is to plus 5 to 0 the reduction. So these are the two oxidation and reduction reaction that is going to happen here in this solution. Using H plus. So where H plus is used. So here there is the oxidized one. So I'm going to balance. There is 2i here, 2i. Now I need to balance the charges to minus here. So there should be two electrons here. Iodine 1, iodine 2. So I need to multiply this by 2 to make this uh, to i minus. Uh, then uh, there is uh, 6 oxygen here. So I will put 6H2O here. So that I have to put 12H plus here. If I am correct. Yes. Then uh, you can see there are 12H plus and 2 uh, minus. So which gives 10H plus. So to, down, to counter the charge, I have to add. Ten electrons, right? So ten uh, plus uh, two, it is uh, twelve. So twelve plus uh, twelve H plus, so it should be zero. And here it is zero. And uh, 
here it is two electrons, right? So these are the two reactions that we have here. Then you can um, add these two to form the overall reaction. But remember when you add these two to form the overall reaction, here there is two, here there is 10. So you need to multiply this by five to make the uh, same number of electrons. So here it will be like uh, 10 I minus giving five I two plus 10 electrons. So this should be the final equation that should be added here. Right, so then you can add here, uh, I will just add the main species, 10 I minus two I O three minus would give six uh, I two, which means five I minus I O three minus would give three I two. I just divided this by two, okay. Uh, so you can see according to this, if you don't see this, I'll write down here. Five minus IO3 minus will give three I2. Okay, so according to this situation, and here in the overall equation, we have H plus that is participating here. So that is the concentration that we need to find. So if you know I2, which gives me the idea, you know here, H plus as well. So typically, it is like uh, four times H plus concentration. So, if you know H plus concentration, that is the first part. So, we calculate the amount of moles of sodium thiosulfate and then we calculate the I2 amount based on the stoichiometry. Here, this should be 2 is to 1. So, which means you know the amount of moles of I2. So, if you know here the amount of moles of I2, which is this one here, same. Then you know the number of moles of H plus. Then you can calculate the concentration of H plus in this 25 cubic centimeter. So that is the first process. Okay. So the first process should be clear. The first process should be I minus uh, and IO3 minus balancing. Then you need to find the amount of I2 that is reacting with sodium thiosulfate using this one. Then if you know I2, you know H plus. That is how you need to find the concentration of H plus, right? So the first procedure is straightforward. But the point that I need to elaborate more here is on the second one, which is the reaction that is happening. In the presence of methyl orange, in the presence of phenolphthalein, that needs to be elaborated more, right? So remember, in this case, in the solution, for the titration with diluted HCl, you have NaOH, which is a base, and sodium carbonate, which is also a base. And here in this situation, all carbonates are precipitated out. So here you have only NaOH uh, for the titration, right? Now, tell me, okay, in this situation with methyl orange, which one will react? Sodium hydroxide or either sodium carbonate or both? I need answer from all of you. Try to give an answer for this. In the presence of methyl orange, what is going to react? Here, we have no problem here, even though we use uh, phenolphthalein, still you have NaOH, so only NaOH is going to react. But here we have two. One is NaOH, the other one is sodium carbonate. So which is going to react here with a diluted HCl? Is it NaOH, sodium carbonate, or both? What do you think? You can uh, use the chat box to write.
So I have one answer saying uh, both. What about others? Do you have any idea? Yes or no? Just say yes or no. What is going to happen here? You have, do you have any idea? Okay, we have another answer, both. Okay, so they say baby both. So, so the easiest thing to identify here, remember, based on the indicator that we use, okay, whether either methyl orange or phenolphthalein, NaOH is always going to react because think about this titration. This is a strong acid HCl versus NaOH, if you consider about only NaOH. So if you remember about our pH curve, I explained to you at one of the papers, this is for the strong acid, strong base. And I told you here, either phenolphthalein or methyl orange, both lies within the vertical portion. So either you can use phenolphthalein or methyl orange, for a strong acid, strong base titration. So anyway, either this situation or the situation that we use phenolphthalein, NaOH is going to react. There is no problem in that. Okay, no confusion. Because strong acid, strong base titration. It is like strong acid, strong base titration. The problem comes with when it reacts with sodium carbonate, okay? Because when you think about sodium carbonate, it in general, when you add HCl, the sodium carbonate first react with HCl to form NaCl. plus NaHCO3. First, it forms bicarbonate from carbonate. And when you add further, this will go uh, sodium bicarbonate plus HCl. It will again form NaCl. Now it will form the carbonic acid, which gives CO2 and water, okay? So these two reactions are going to happen when you add HCl dropwise. But remember, these two reactions are going to happen in a two different endpoints. And the initial endpoint would be like this, and the second endpoint will be like this. Okay, it is not just the case with NaOH reacting with HCl, which had only one vertical portion. Now here it will have two vertical portion with pH and here added volume of HCl, right? Remember in this region, where your indicator phenolphthalein lies, okay, because that is higher pH, 8.1, 10.3. In this region, only this reaction is going to happen. And when you use this methyl orange indicator, remember this reaction as well as this reaction is going to happen because when you use phenolphthalein, you add HCl. And when the color change is from basic to acidic, here this is basics initially, so pink to colorless, you stop the reaction, which means only this reaction is going to happen. But when you use methyl orange, you come across this first endpoint and you come across and through to the second end point. 
because your color change now happening here at this position, which means first sodium carbonate will react to form sodium bicarbonate. And at the end of this reaction, the form sodium bicarbonate also again react with HCl to form in NaCl carbon dioxide and water. Okay. So please remember in a solution where you have sodium carbonate, forget about NaOH for a while. I'm talking only about a solution that contains sodium carbonate. So if you have sodium carbonate in a solution, remember if you use phenolphthalein, only one endpoint can be determined. And if you use methyl orange, both of these endpoints can be determined. So that is the idea of this uh, using different indicators. Okay. Now here in this question, we use methyl orange here, which gives me the idea for this particular solution, NaOH is also going to react and two endpoints of sodium carbonate is also going to react because we have used methyl orange. So your answers are correct. Both are going to react, okay? But at the same time, you need to determine whether this, it will end here or either end here. That is the idea, right? So here, if you use methyl orange here, there will be this equation, NaOH plus HCl, which gives uh, NaCl and water, okay? So this three reaction is going to happen, okay? So if you think the volume of HCl that is going to have cause for this one, if this is V1, and if this is V2, what should be this one? You can use the chat box. Let's say in this uh, solution, NaOH volume, uh, HCl volume that is necessarily needed to react with NaOH is V1, okay? And uh, Na2CO3 to form its first endpoint, this region, let's say it is V2. What should be the volume here? In terms of V2, what do you think? Is it same V2 or it will have a different value? What do you think? Check this out. So you have sodium carbonate in the solution. You add HCl. And when you end this first endpoint, you have added V2 volume. Remember here, this should be V2 because you have added that amount of volume of HCl, okay? Remember for the second equation, all bicarbonate that is formed in the first one is going to react. So this bicarbonate amount of moles that formed here should be equal to the amount of moles that should be reacting here. So which gives me the idea, okay, if V2 is necessarily needed to form sodium bicarbonate from sodium carbonate, this is going to react here. The same amount is going to react here. So this also should be V2 because the amount of bicarbonate that form here is the same amount that is reacting here. And the amount of all bicarbonate that is formed here is again going to react here. So if this is consuming V2 volume, this is also consuming V2 volume. Okay, so there is no problem in that. And if you write this as an entire equation, this should be sodium carbonate plus HCl giving sodium uh, chloride, H2O, CO2. I just add these two. 
and then you need to balance this so you can see the stoichiometric ratio from hcl is to sodium carbonate is 2 is to 1 okay so get the idea that is the necessary uh, thing that you need to know right so if you have this situation where i use methyl orange there will be this reaction where NaOH reacting with this one and V2, this one and this one. And if you use phenolphthalein, okay, let's say you did not add barium chloride here. So in the solution, you will have NaOH and sodium carbonate and you are using phenolphthalein. That is one situation that you can imagine. So if you did not add barium carbonate, remember in the presence of phenolphthalein, this first reaction is anyway going to happen, but it will stop here at the second reaction because it will not go to here because you are stopping here using phenolphthalein. But here in this particular question, we don't have that problem because they have all precipitated this carbonate. So in the solution, there is no carbonate. So if you use phenolphthalein, only this reaction is going to happen because in the solution we don't have carbonate. But what I am telling is, if you did not add barium chloride to precipitate out barium carbonate, if you still have in this solution, this NaOH and sodium carbonate, at that condition, if you use methyl orange, all these three reactions are going to happen. And if you use phenolphthalein, only these first two reactions are going to happen. That is the overall idea. So is this only reaction occurring in uh, two steps? We have learned this as one step. How to determine whether it is uh, one step or uh, two step? That is what I am telling. This two overall reaction is this that I have given you, right? So this two step, this overall reaction includes these two steps, okay? So this overall reaction is going to happen when you use methyl orange, okay, when you use methyl orange, you will come here, which means at the time when you find the end point, this reaction as well as this reaction is going to happen, which means the overall reaction is this, okay. But when you use phenolphthalein, only this first equation of the sodium carbonate is going to happen because the reaction is going to end at this place. You can remember this overall reaction, no problem in that, but you need to know this overall reaction happens in two steps. First, it will form the bicarbonate and the same bicarbonate is again reacting with HCl to form uh, carbon dioxide and water. Okay, so this is the idea, right? Now we will go to our question. Is it clear? We will uh, go to the question and uh, I will elaborate this more uh, in a different situation, okay. So normally all carbonates uh, react so. Carbonate, not all carbonates, so carbonate reacts at different condition, at different indicators, okay? So I will finish this question first, then I will come to the uh, point, okay? Because I cannot teach the entire theory because we normally study this in our theory. Okay, so now we will come to our question. So here we have methyl orange that we used. So here, what is the reaction that is going to happen? First, NaOH will be reacting. So let's say the volume of uh, that is consuming for NaOH with HCl, let's say it is V1, okay? So what is the other reaction that is going to happen? Sodium carbonate with HCl giving NaCl H2O plus CO2. So I am, I am writing this as a overall reaction. Why? Because I have used methyl orange here and I know there is these two steps that is going to happen. Okay, first sodium uh, carbonate coming uh, sodium bicarbonate 
and then sodium bicarbonate again going to carbon dioxide and water. Why? Because I have used methyl orange. So no problem. So let's say this is V2. And you know V1 plus V2 is equal to 32 cubic centimeter. In the second situation where we use phenolphthalein, only NaOH plus HCl is going to happen. So only V1 is going to happen because this is not there because it is already precipitated out. Okay, so which gives me the idea here, uh, V1 should be equal to 24 cubic centimeter. Okay, because same volume is used here as well as here, 25 cubic centimeter of the solution. So according to that, you can automatically see here, V2 should be 32 minus 24, which is eight cubic centimeter. Okay, so V2 is eight cubic centimeter of HCl that is consumed. So you know the concentration of HCl from the previous step, like the uh, titration with thiosulfate I2, then you find the concentration of H plus. So if you know the concentration of H plus, you can multiply this by the volume to get the number of moles of HCl consumed. Then you can find the number of moles of sodium carbonate based on the stoichiometry two is to one. Then you can multiply by this molecular weight to get the amount of sodium carbonate. Then you can find the percentage, okay? So did you understand the explanation of this particular question? This question is easy because they have added barium carbonate and they have made easier for you. Okay. So let's move to uh, some more of the concept, right? So I will give you a different situation. So you try to predict. Okay, so let's see. Uh, we have a solution that contains NaOH. And we are going to titrate with uh, HCl in the presence of uh, methyl orange or phenolphthalein. Situation one, right? Then, situation two, uh, we have a solution of sodium carbonate and we are going to titrate with HCl, okay? And in the presence of uh, methyl orange or either phenolphthalein. Situation number two. Situation number three, we have NaOH, uh, Na2CO3, and we are going to titrate uh, in the presence of methyl orange, or phenolphthalein. Okay, so think about these three situations. Okay, so when you think about these three situations, the first one is a strong acid versus strong base titration because it's CLN in image. Second one strong acid versus weak uh, base titration. Third one, where you have both, there is a strong acid versus strong base titration with HCl to NaOH, and there is a strong acid versus weak base titration. Okay. Right. And then if you consider about the pH curve uh, with HCl volume here, I will add HCl volume here and here the pH. And if you titrate with a NaOH, the titrate with HCl uh, in NaOH solution, the pH curve is going to happen like this. This is the strong acid, strong base pH curve. And this will be around like the vertical portion will be around 11 to 3, pH 11 to pH 3. So your indicators 
phenolphthalein or either methyl orange is within this vertical region. So either if you use phenolphthalein or either methyl orange, the same reaction is going to happen. That is NaOH plus HCl will give NaCl and water. So if that is consuming a volume of V1, that V1 is consumed for the reaction with NaOH. No problem, right? When you go to this sodium carbonate solution, the pH curve is like this. For sodium carbonate, again, it's a little bit lower. Here it starts with 13 and then here it comes to 11 at the start of the vertical portion. So here normally it starts with around 10 point something and go from nine. So here it will go like this and like this. Okay, so your indicator phenolphthalein lies here. And when you use phenolphthalein, the reaction that is going to happen, sodium carbonate HCl, NaHCO3 plus NaCl. NaHCO3 plus NaCl. And when you use methyl orange, here NaHCO3 plus HCl will give NaCl, CO2, water. Okay. So when you use methyl orange, these two reactions are going to happen. First, sodium carbonate is going to convert it to sodium bicarbonate and then forming sodium bicarbonate is going to convert to NaCl and carbon dioxide and water. So when you use methyl orange, NaCl plus uh, sodium carbonate plus HCl uh, will give NaCl, H2O, and water. H2O and carbon dioxide. When you use phenolphthalein, remember only first equation is going to happen. Because you stop here at the end point of phenolphthalein. So when you use phenolphthalein, remember sodium carbonate is going to react with HCl forming NaCl plus NaHCO3. Okay. But remember this overall reaction that I have mentioned here is happening with these two steps, don't forget, right? So for an example, uh, if the volume for this uh, first reaction, when you use methyl orange is V2, the same amount of bicarbonate is going to react for this one. So this also should consume V2 because the number of moles are same. So here for this overall reaction, it should be 2V2. And let's say for when you use phenolphthalein, uh, only sodium carbonate to bicarbonate reaction is going to happen. And this volume should be V2. Okay. So when you use phenolphthalein, this reaction is going to stop here. Okay. So let's say this volume consumed is V2. And when you use methyl orange, this reaction is not going to happen uh, only. Only not uh, this reaction is going to continue, in fact. So first it will form sodium bicarbonate by using V2. Why it is V2? Because we know when you use phenolphthalein only this reaction is going to happen. So if this is V2, this also should be V2. But this is going to happen. The form sodium bicarbonate, see stoichiometry is one is to one. So same amount of sodium carbonate that is for in the solution is forming here. And this same amount again reacting with it here. So this is V2. That is why here it is V2. This is 2V2. Okay. Now come to this situation. Now in this situation, if you use phenolphthalein, right? These are same volume, right? 25, 25, 25. So in this situation, if you use phenolphthalein, remember there is NaOH that is going to react with HCl. So it will have like V1. 
consuming for this particular reaction. And sodium carbonates, in the presence of phenolphthalein, you know only this reaction is going to happen. So there will be V1 plus V2 that is going to happen. If you use methyl orange, you see again V1 is anyway going to happen. But when you use methyl orange, first this reaction is happening, then second this reaction is happening. So it is V1 plus 2V2. Okay, because when you use methyl orange, anyway HCl plus NaOH is going to happen. But here for the sodium carbonate, these two endpoints going to pass. And finally, there will be two times the volume that is uh, consumed for uh, one reaction is going to consume because the same amount of bicarbonate is here. This is here. So this is going to happen. Okay. So did you understand this? If you understand this, okay. So this is uh, very important to uh, do this uh, titration uh, questions, right? To understand what is actually happening, right? So if you uh, have any further questions you can post me in the group and you can clarify all the reactions right so i will additionally in for this particular situation uh, i will give you a little bit more i'm not going to do this but you try to do this okay Oh, okay, so think about a solution uh, that you have uh, sodium hydroxide. Okay, so let's say this is 25 cubic centimeter. And let's say you uh, uh, bubble CO2 gas, carbon dioxide gas. Okay, you have an NaOH solution and you bubble carbon dioxide gas. Right, and let's say 40% of NaOH is converted. I am not going to write converted to which one? Okay, so your duty is. First, find if you have a NaOH solution when you bubble CO2, what is going to happen? That is first, which means you need to know the reaction between NaOH and carbon dioxide. That is one. Second, when you have a statement like this 40% of NaOH is converted to something, surely you know NaOH is carbon dioxide. I am not going to give direct answer. It can be either sodium carbonate or sodium bicarbonate that is going to form. Okay. So think about that. And if you uh, know 40% of NaOH is converted, you know 60% of NaOH is remaining in the solution. So 40% according to the stoichiometry between these two should be converted to sodium carbonate or sodium bicarbonate. Okay. Then try to find whether if you use two different indicators, methyl orange and uh, phenolphthalein. what are the reactions that is going to happen? The resultant solution, when the resultant solution of this is titrated with HCl. Okay. So the question is clear or not? Is the question is clear? Okay, so try to imagine and try to do it yourself. 
So I'm not going to go further on this. Uh, so this question is very nice because I had to elaborate this question and I will, I have to uh, give some additional information and I have given you a question as well. So try to counter, right? You have a NaOH solution and you bubble CO2 so that 40% of NaOH is converted to something. So you need to find for what it can be converted when sodium hydroxide is reacted to carbon dioxide. That is first duty. Second one is, okay, so you have a resultant solution where 40% of NaOH is converted to either sodium carbonate or sodium bicarbonate and you have 60% of NaOH remaining in the solution. Now I am asking when you titrate with either phenophthalene or methyl orange, uh, what are the reactions that is going to happen? Okay, so do it yourself. So question number eight is done. 